الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about one of the topics that is found in the book Al Risala al Qushayriya of Imam Abu al Qasim al Qushayri, where he talks about Zuhd. This word is very familiar and it is a term in many different languages all over the Muslim world. When you translate this word into English, zuhud means renunciation. Renunciation. So the Imam goes into details of what we renounce, and it also teaches us how to renounce. Whatever we renounce, how we renounce them. So and the chapter starts with a hadith of our blessed and beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam where he says إِذَا رَأَيْتَ الرَّجُلْ قَدْ أُوْتِيَ زُهْدًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَنْطِقًا فَاقْتَرِبُوا مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَلْقِنُ الْحِكْمَةِ which means if you see a man who has been endowed with renunciation of the world and speech then draw near to him for he is infused with wisdom. So again, if you see a person who is staying away from the pleasures of this world, whose interest is not into the pleasures of this world, and also in speech, does not talk a lot, then draw near to this person, because this person is infused with wisdom. Hikmah. Allah Jalla Jalalu make us among those Taro. So, this is a hadith that the chapter starts with. And this hadith is also found in the Kutub al Sitta, in the six collections of hadith, and uh, narrated also by Ibn Majah. I believe the meaning of this hadith it is sound, it has a true meaning. Because we have experienced this in our lives when we draw near to these people who are careful with the world, who uh, abstain from the worldly desires, and who do not talk a lot, we always draw uh, wisdom from these people. So it is an experience in our life that proves uh, this hadith to be correct. Um, and then the Imam says that people differ concerning renunciation. When he says defers, does not mean that they, uh, some of them reject this idea and some of them accept it. It doesn't mean that, but it means that they defer in the methods of how to apply the renunciation or zuhud in their lives. So there are mainly two ideas. Number one, it's not good to stay away and not to utilize the blessings uh, by the opportunity that comes ahead of you. This is the first idea. Again, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you property, has given you wealth, so take advantage of it. You know, use it in the right way. Take advantage of it. Don't uh, just let it go. Because that is a gift for you to utilize it in the right way. And the other idea of the scholars that Imam al Qushayri mentions is uh, renunciating the permitted as a virtue. Meaning you're staying away of those things that are permitted to you and that becomes a part of the virtue. You're not too much interested. You let somebody else deal with those things. Now, there are people too who would say, you know what, I like the first idea. They would say, you know, I feel more comfortable 
you know, utilizing what God has given me, the wealth and so on. And you have other people who say, you know what, I see the wealth uh, as something that stands between me and my Lord. So I do have the power not to be engaged with it. I do have the power to quit that and to be interested in other things that are going to draw me near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an individual choice. But both of these are permissible when dealing with zuhd, with renunciation. And it comes down to uh, the individual choice and what is better for you, what do you feel more comfortable with. The Imam later on goes on and mentions a verse from the Quran where he supports the idea of zuhd. From Surah An-Nisa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned قُلْ مَتَاعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى Say, little is the enjoyment of this world, the hereafter is best for those who fear God. And then the Imam says, they say, they, when he says they, the scholars, they say concerning the meaning of renunciation, of zuhd, each speaks from his own moment, waqt. It is, a, it is a Sufi terminology, waqt, the moment. So each of this scholar, when talks, when elaborates on zuhd, on renunciation, they talk from, the, uh, from their moment, the moment they are in. So each speaks from his own moment and indicates his own limit. We find the same thing when interpreting the al-isharat of the Qur'an, the symbolism in the Qur'an. They speak from their levels of spirituality because they all do differ in their spiritual levels. And when they give these definitions, they give these definitions according to their spiritual levels. Now, the Imam goes into the sayings of the scholars after mentioning the hadith, after mentioning the verse from the Quran, he goes on into the statements of the scholars, uh, who, uh, the statements that they made about zuhd or renunciation. And the first that he mentions is Sufyan al Thawri, one of the great scholars. Sufyan al Thawri, who declared renunciation of the world is reduction of hope for worldly gain. Not eating coarse foods or wearing a rough clock. This is a very important statement that he made here. Renunciation of the world is reduction of hope for worldly gains. Meaning that zuhud is not just dressing up with teared up clothes and eating the worst food that is out there. You're not showing zuhd by doing this. But he says you're showing zuhd, you're showing this renunciation by uh, decreasing your wish for worldly gains. And this is in contrast with the wishes of the humans nowadays. Because everybody is into worldly gains. Everybody is into like, how am I going to make more money tomorrow? How am I going to achieve uh, to open two more businesses? You know, they don't sleep at night. They have so much concern about the worldly things. And we know that worldly things, they go away. They're not, they're not going to be with us all the time. However, the humans, though, they are so concerned about this. It's a very beautiful statement that Sufyan al mentions. <clears throat> Sari al-Saqati asserted, God may be exalted, withdraws the world from his saints, from the awliya. He withdraws the world, denies it to the pure ones, now, between the awliya now, there's the pure ones. They have purity in their hearts. 
so he will draw through, uh, withdraws the world from the saints, denies it to the pure ones, and removes it from the hearts of those whom he loves. Takes it away. For he has not approved it for them. Allah has not approved the world for, for these categories of people. I mean, for the majority, earning the livelihood, going after the livelihood, it is permissible. Allah did not deny that. But for those who, who He has loved and chose them to be very close to Him, He has removed it away from their path. So the word the gain is not a concern for them. We have to be very careful because sometimes people, they interpret uh, these uh, definitions of tasawwuf as, uh, as, or they portray tasawwuf as, as something that people, they have to, you know, they have to curse everything that is in the world, and they have to leave everything that exists out there. Just, this is not the idea. I mean, th th this is not the idea. The idea is to be less concerned about worldly the gains. But it doesn't mean that you should starve to death, or you should not associate with anybody or anything like that. It is said that renunciation is alluded to in his saying, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, in order that you may not despair over matters that pass by you, nor exalt over favors bestowed upon you. Because the renouncer does not delight in what he has of the world, nor grieve over what he does not have. Now here he is given a quality of the Zahid. Zahid is the person who applies renunciation. He's saying that the Zahid does not show off whatever he has. This is their quality. This is how you can tell somebody who's a Zahid. If they have a lot, if God has given them a lot, they don't show off for whatever God has given them. And if they do not have it, if they do not possess something, they do not show ambition to have that. Somebody owns a business and you do not have a business, you do not own a business, you're preoccupied with other things in life, so you don't have that ambition. You know what, I'm going to have that because he has that. You don't have that ambition. You're making your life, Alhamdulillah, you are happy with what you have, Alhamdulillah. You don't have those, you know, the worldly ambition. And some people will reject this. You have even Muslims who would say, you know what, I don't agree with that. You should have a lot, you know. But from the teachings of the Tasawwuf is not to have that ambition. You want to know who a Zahid is? The one who does not show off for what he has, and the one who does not show ambition for what he does not possess. Abu Uthman remarked, renunciation is that you abandon the world and then not be concerned with those who take hold of it. You abandon the gains in this world, again, you don't abandon the whole thing, everything, because you have to make the living in this world, but generally speaking, you abandon the desires for this world, the ambition, and you do not become jealous because some people they have it. Or you're not concerned about a certain person having that. Oh, he has that. Uh, I, I feel something in my heart. I should have that too. No. You're fine with what you have. Yahya bin Mu'ad, rahimahullah, observed renunciation causes generosity with possession and love brings generosity with spirit. So generosity is achieved through giving less value to the worldly gains. You become generous with people. And generosity in your spirit, in your heart is when you have the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very beautiful statement. 
Renunciation is to regard the world with the eye of extension so that it becomes law in your eyes. Then turning away from it will become easy for you. So you look at the world not with a passion, not, oh, look at this, how magnificent it is. It doesn't matter too much. You know, you look at the world as something that doesn't matter too much. And when you do that, zuhud, renunciation, becomes easy for you to apply. This is teaching us, Imam, through this statement, is teaching us how to attain the zuhud. You want to make this a part of your trade, a part, a part of your character, then stop looking at the worldly things with a big eye. Look at those things as insignificant things. Then you can be able to attain to it. Junaid al-Baghdadi instructed, Renunciation is this, the heart is empty of that which the hand is empty of. If you don't have it in your hand, don't have it in your heart. Don't worry about it. If you have it, alhamdulillah. If you don't have it, don't wish it with your heart to have it. He mentions here a beautiful statement, yet different from these other previous statements of the scholars. Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah, commented, Renunciation is trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined with the love of poverty. Even if you are in a state of poverty, but because you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of you, you have that 100% full uh, conviction inside of you, that's called zuhud. So it's a combination of loving the poverty with the reliance of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But actually, if you are in that state, you don't consider yourself poor anymore. You know? If, 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 if you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of your affairs, you're not poor anymore. Nobody is poor. I don't think that they will be convinced, even if they have less food to eat, they're in a different world. Even though people might not be in your level, but you still have to respect them. You might be a boss, you might have your own employees working for you. Don't implement power on people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has the power. Be with them gentle, be with them respectful, be with them nice, kind, merciful. Otherwise you do not express the trait of zuhud. I'll repeat it again, the statement. One will not attain true renunciation until he possesses these qualities. Three, action without attachment, speaking without ambition, and glory without having power over man. So you're achieving glory, but without having power over man, out of love and respect, mutual respect. Beautiful statement, Yahya bin Mu'adh rahimahullah. The Nun al Misri was asked by a man, when may I renounce the world? The answer was given, when you renounce yourself. This is another statement which tells us how to achieve this as well. How to get into this, into Zuhud. If you want to get into Zuhud, then the first step, he says, is to renounce yourself meaning your ego, meaning your ambitions. If you start working with yourself first, then you can be able to work with the dunya, and you can also be able to work with the people as well. A man asked Yahya bin Mu'ad, when will I enter the tavern of trust, where the clock of renunciation, the clock of zuhd, and be seated with the ascetics? Be seated with those who are Ashab Zuhd, people of Zuhd. Yahya bin Mu'adh replied, When you come to a point 
in the ascetic training of your soul in secret. You are training your soul in secret that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to cut off your subsist subsistence for three days, you would not weaken in yourself. But when this goal is not attained, then sitting on the carpet with the ascetics is foolishness. Pretending to be an ascetic, pretending to be a spiritual person is foolishness. You're fooling yourself. And I do not guarantee you will not be disgraced among them. It is also declared whoever speaks of renunciation and admonishes people while desiring what they own, God Most High removes the love of the hereafter from his heart. If you're still attached with what the others are gaining, with what the others are achieving, you have that zeal inside of you, that eagerness, that ambition. Oh, he's having this, why I can't, you know, I'm going to have that. Having those passions like that in Islam are considered to be dangerous. Dangerous again for those people who want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot get closer to Him unless they denounce. Imam mentions a statement of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, one of the four uh, Imams of the traditional schools of thoughts, the founder of the Hanbali Madhab. He explained, there are three kinds of renunciation. I love this statement as well. This is a beautiful statement. There are three kinds of renunciation. Number one, forswearing the forbidden. In the renunciation of the common people, staying away what is forbidden. And this belongs to the category of those people uh, who are the common folk. They're just staying away from haram. They're good in that state. This is the first category. Second category. For swearing access in the permitted is the renunciation of the elite. Even though there are a lot of things that are permitted to them to consume or to possess, they decide not to because it becomes an obstacle between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they denounce. But these are the elite. And forswearing whatever diverts the servant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high is the renunciation of the Gnostics. Of those who have the ma'rifah the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahya bin Mu'ad observed, and we are getting at the end of this chapter, inshallah. We have only a couple more statements. Yahya bin Mu'ad observed, the world is like the unveiled bride. This is a beautiful uh, characterizing that he does to the world. And very interesting. The world is like the unveiled bride. Bride, that is unveiled. That's how this dunya, he's talking about the dunya. It is like an unveiled bride. The one who seeks the world, the one who seeks this unveiled bride, becomes the maid of this lady. And the one who renounces its blackness her faith with soot tears out her hair and sets her dress on fire. Because he realizes that this is a fake bride. It is something bad. They are able to see the true face of this bride. 
So they rip off this, this uh, veil. They fight with the dunya. Who are these? These are people who attain zogut. People who are applying renunciation in their life. And then the third category says, it talks about the Gnostic. The Gnostic is preoccupied with God the Most High, does not even turn his face in her direction. He's not even interested to see what kind of face this bride has because he already knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already taught him before he even looking at the dunya. Very beautiful, very beautiful. And the last statement that I'm about to mention today, inshallah, is from Al Fudayl, great scholar as well, bin Iyad. Fudayl bin Iyad, he related God placed all evil in one house and made its key love of the world. All the evil. He placed this evil in one house and he made the key to open this door of the house the love for this world so if you have the love for this world man you're in trouble you 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 open the door for all the evils to come to you he placed all goodness in another house and made its key renunciation made the key of this house the soot. If you want to get inside the world of the blessings, inside the world of whatever benefits your spirit, your heart, and your relation with your God, then open the door of Zot. Open the door with the key of Zot. Renunciation. I ask Allah to shower with His blessings and his countless reward, the spirit of Imam al Pushaidi, to make us from those who benefit from his beautiful explanations, to make us also benefit from all of these great scholars and masters uh, that are mentioned through his chapters. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us zubd, to make us from those people who are people of zubd, renunciation. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة